dun, 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 dun. Hello, everybody. Welcome again. This is the GG Rated Live Show. You're listening to episode 14, and I'm your host, the Iceman. Uh, joining me today is our friend Hydra. How's it going, Hydra? Yeah, doing good. Uh, missing a bit, Sebastian, to be honest, but uh, the guy is just committed to other plans at the moment. I know that he's just running after all the Swedish girls, and, well, it, uh, it's a fairly, fairly distant reason, I would say, so okay. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, as Hydra mentioned, we are short one member today, so it'll just be Hydra and myself bringing you guys all the news in action, but we're still going to do our best to uh, make things crazy and enjoyable for everybody listening. And, um, yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah, it's going to be plenty fine. Next week, but uh, next week you'll be missing Hydra, won't you? You're going to be on a vacation or something? Oh, yeah. Holidays for just one week, okay, from Sunday to Sunday. Not a big deal. I'll be back fast, but I'm be, I'll be missing one of the GG rated. Well, um, actually, probably I won't be missing it. I'm going to be watching the VOD later on, and I'll be even uploading it on my channel. But still, I'll be absent on that week. I'm going to get a bit of sun. The weather here is getting really hot, uh, really awesome sun outside, and I need to go out a little bit. You know, the nerds also need to get a bit of sun on their bones. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to see people getting flash banged by your pale skin. So, so uh, get some sun, my man. <laughs> but uh, dude, plenty of plenty of awesome stuff that happened this past uh, week since we had our last show. Were you uh, keeping up oh, with yeah. all the events? Yeah, I've been following, well, I always give priority to the GSL, I enjoy it a lot, but I've been following most of the stuff. I sat down to watch some NASL as well, took a, a look around to check most of the matches actually from NASL and saw some pretty nice stuff. Also IPL, the news from IPL, mm -hmm. and um, basically that's it. Now I'm following the up and down matches, but I actually haven't sat down today to take a look at the up and down, so I'm missing those matchups. Yeah, Though I, I. we have the results here already. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be so, uh, uh, spoiling the results for both of us, but uh, we yeah, got to do that yeah. in the interest of the people, man, so let's go for it. And uh, <laughs> since, you're, since you're keen on the GSL, why don't we start off with that topic for today, and uh, we'll start yeah. off with the Code S results. Um, I will get the GSL May Code S round of eight results up, and uh, I'll mm -hmm. read them off, and then I'll start the VOD, and then uh, I'll let you take it from there, and you can give us some commentary on the matches. Oh, please. If you recall, last week I was basically monopolizing most of the stream, so I guess it's my turn to be just shut up and listen. I'm going to try to learn something. Go for it. All right. Uh, GSL May, Code S, Round of Eight. I'm um, getting the VOD rolling here. Code of Eight, um, or Round of Eight, rather, we had Inca beating out Killer 3-0 to zero, and Nesty verdict beating any pro prime 3-1 and this was for the code s round of eight day two so uh hydra why don't you comment a little bit on the matches and uh i'll make some comments on after you're done go for it well um you're starting with the round of eight day two we had the killer versus inca clear cut there 3-0 and ink is just in such a top shape i mean anyone following the gsl knows where he is at the moment and obviously we're going to throw some spoilers here but um Killer didn't stood a chance there. Um, you do know that PvP has always that volatile element and things might be going uh, um, one side or the other and it's a bit random, but still Inca was just on top of his game and dominated Killer. And then we had Nasty uh, dominating his match against any Pro Prime. Wasn't that far away. I mean, ended up being a 3-1 on favor of Nasty. It shows how solid he is. But um, it was impressive to actually watch Nasty there. I mean, he had some beautiful moves. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure you're going to discuss, because you already mentioned that with me, about that spine crawler push that he did. Definitely. was just brilliant. And uh, people, are, I'm sure, are going to be able to check it out there on the VOD uh, while I'm discussing this with, um, with the Iceman. But he was just so, so fine playing that game. And um, basically dominated any pro prime. Any pro was doing fairly well. I mean, had a nice tournament, but... Um, he just faced a, a, a tremendous force there, a powerhouse playing Zerg. Nasty continues to be one of the finest currently on StarCraft 2, and he's just showing that once more. Mm -hmm, definitely. I, uh, <laughs> as, we were, as we were talking earlier, I did want to mention the, the Nasty, the creative play that he showed, and just his phenomenal, his strength and complacency that he's showing throughout his matches. Um, 
that match against uh, any pro prime where he did the spine crawler rush on a uh, dual site, I believe it was, was just yeah, it was huge. He was that huge. was just awesome to watch, and uh, I mean, he punished any pro prime. And uh, I believe Nest T is showing us that okay, people are saying, hey, maybe Zerg is a weak race. Uh uh, Nest T is showing how it's done, man. I mean, he is just powerful. And um, as as we'll be talking on later on, we're gonna be seeing um, Nest T. Uh, in the finals, so second time we're having uh, Nest T in the finals, and uh, another Zerg player making it to the finals. But um, I mean, he's been playing so well. So if there's someone you want to emulate your uh, Zerg play from, it would be Nest T. But um, I don't want to take anything away from our other champion as well, Inca, who uh, made it out of the round of eight. His his micro has been phenomenal. I mean. Um, the guy is just looking solid on all fronts right now, and uh, yeah, it's gonna yeah, be yeah. it's gonna be really exciting to see what he can do versus next Nest T. Yeah, that is true. Um, um, I would like to mention that obviously you're saying that uh, Zerg can win. Zerg has the power to do it. Obviously, in the hands of Nasty, with some tremendous macro and micro, he can basically do everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. I sometimes I feel like he's playing inside that booth with his feet as well as his hands. You know, <laughs> he's but, got uh, some extra mic yeah, down there. Yeah, yeah, but basically he has the capability to multitask all of that, but it shows that it is doable with Zerg. Zerg is a powerhouse in the right hand, mm -hmm. and obviously us lower players might struggle a little bit, but there is ways, ways out, you know? It's better for you to try to adapt to the game you have than just keep complaining about the game you actually don't have. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Things will eventually will be more balanced and, uh, and uh, will feel a bit more comfortable, but for now, you actually have a pretty decent and interesting matchup here. The races are trying to be even out by Blizzard. It's still not perfect, but it is doable, and ST is showing all of that to us. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um... Yeah, I mean, I don't actually play Zerg myself, but uh, if there was one person that I wanted to emulate, uh, I would either look to Demaga or Nest T, because both players, in my opinion, are very strong and uh, consistent players, and especially Nest T has just, he's proved to be a phenomenal player, and uh, yep. consistency is very key in what he's shown. But um, Demaga is pretty awesome as well, yeah, yeah you're I right. Agree. I would love to see uh, Demaga go over to Korea and try his luck in the GSL. In my opinion, that would be uh, something that would be rewarding for him as well as his fans. Uh, what is your opinion? Mm -hmm. Well, I would like to see him there. As you know, he did quite well on that um, team event, remember, on the mm -hmm. World Championships? Yep. Uh, I mean, he played really well there. He, he showed us a couple of tricks. He took a victory over Nesty, which is always a good thing, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's a sign that he might be fit to just go there and be one of the foreigners. As we all know, and um, I'm pretty sure he's been checking that out, especially this week, the, the um, foreign force in Korea at the moment is slowly dwindling down, and some of the references that you had there are basically fading away. Yeah. Uh, you have already several gamers, like players like TLO and Red, just heading back home. And now you had the results this week with Jinro and such, but I guess we're going to talk about that soon yeah. enough. But um, yeah, it would be nice to have reinforcements there, I would say. I agree. Um, that about covers it, covers it for the round of eight. Shall we continue on with the round of four? Go for it, go. All right, let me get the round of four. Round of four results we have, surprise, surprise, OGS Nada versus Inca. And uh, Inca surprisingly took it 3-0. Um, his high pressure builds were just too well executed, and his micro was just phenomenal. And uh, he punished Nada in every game that we saw. Um, even in the third game on Crevasse, where uh, Inca made a mistake and Nada had scouted his cheese early on, uh, Inca was able to gather himself and go into a, uh, a sort of two base uh, all in. So he was able yeah. to save himself there, but he still, I mean, executed well. The guy is playing phenomenal right now, and uh, he took the series 3 0 there. And then we saw Nest T versus SC4U, which turned out to be uh, an excellent series. Uh, went all five games, and Nest T won 3-2. Um, and SC4U proved to be quite the opponent. Uh, he gave Nest T one heck of a time. And um, yeah. if you haven't seen those matches, I would highly recommend that you go back and mat watch that because it was very entertaining, ZVT. Yeah, I, I watch all of that. Actually, it's funny because um, I was convinced I already watched the, the GSL semifinals. Mm -hmm. 
and I just let it go for like a couple of days. So I only noticed last night that I actually haven't sat down to check these matches. And I watched them. I started last night and ended up this um, morning finishing up the NST versus SC for you. Mm-hmm. And boy, it was just awesome to watch that. Yeah. Um, but uh, first things first, about Inca versus Nada. As you saw as well, Inca went for a lot of quirky builds, you know? Lots mm-hmm. of shenanigans, proxy stuff with proxy stargates and such. But um, like we already discussed and we were commenting on that as well before we started the show. I mean, at this level, you have to do what you have to do. And um, if Inca thinks that that's the thing that will work to break Nada, he just goes for it. And actually paid off. I mean, 3-0, Nada didn't stood a chance there. With all of those uh, proxy stargates and all the arrests that he did, he just paid off. Mm-hmm. And um, then you have the really close call, SC versus Nesty, ended up with the final game on the best out of five being kind of a trade-off, and it was really, really close, really risky there, but uh, Nesty was able to pull off the win. And uh, respect for Nesty because he was just being solid, solid, solid here. And um, obviously I need to uh, send a shout-out as well for or SC for you. Keep in mind that it's the only for you guy on Code S, mm-hmm. and you reach the semifinals. Um, something tells me that for you needs to recruit some more players, good quality players, because uh, SC is a bit alone at the moment. Yeah, poor SC, but uh, he he really gave Nest a run for his money, and that was a very exciting series. But um, yeah, really close. Yeah, but it's going to be a good finals, man, because we are going to be rewarded with some. Uh, interesting players. I think these people are kind of on the opposite end of this spectrum, uh, you might say, Mm -hmm. because if you guys notice, if you look in the stream, the finals will be OGS Inca versus Nest T, and uh, Nest T is more of a complete player who focuses on macro and micro at the same time, really wants to build up his forces, whereas Inca, uh, so far he's been showing us high pressure uh, quirky builds, as Hydra was saying, and um, this is going to be Quite an interesting clash between these two players, in my opinion. What do you think, Hydra? Mm-hmm. Any predictions? Hey, it's going to be awesome. Um, Nasty is already a, a veteran on these situations here, but um, Inke, I think it's the first time he's actually getting into a GSL Finals. Um, he has what he takes. I mean, the guy is really solid. And um, I think that he, even on the interviews, he mentioned that uh, he was, he's was he been practicing with his teammates. He was thanking uh, Young Min Chul, OGS MC. So uh, he's taking his lessons just right, being humble enough to just learn from the best, to become one of the best as well. I mean, getting to the finals of the GSL, it doesn't happen every day. So um, hopefully Inga will be able to put out a nice show against Nasty, but beware because uh, Nasty is really, really good. I mean, top Zerg in the whole world, no questions asked. And um, let me be honest about this, I do like Nasty a lot. I remember his nickname from the days of Brood War, it was Zerg Bong, and I always remember that and makes me laugh. <laughs> and um, I, I, I'm, I'm probably going to be rooting for the guy, you know? Uh-huh. He's going to be, he's a huge Zerg player and hopefully he's going to be doing good on the finals. But um, if Inca takes the win, it doesn't affect me at all. I mean, it's going to be nice. I just want a nice, really close games there on that final. Not a 4-0 and it's basically over. I wanted to go to the last game and be a really, really close battle so we can get, so we can get an epic final. I agree completely. Um, I know that Basically, in my eyes, and probably most other people's eyes, Inca is the clear underdog here since uh, Nest T has the finals experience. But uh, I'm not really sure who to root for. I just I'm basically neutral in this situation. I just want to see a uh, awesome series, as you were saying. You don't want to see a quick 4-0. But uh, whoever wins yeah. wins. I mean, it it would be cool to see Nest T win. That way, we would have uh, two GSL champions who have won um, twice. That would be MC and Nest T. Uh, holding two titles each if Nasty wins this time. So that would be yeah, uh, yeah. kind of cool for the whole uh, GSL anthology and backstory. But, uh, man, whoever wins, I'll be excited for because it's going to be an action-packed series nonetheless. Yeah, it will be cool. Um, so what's next now? Tell me. Let's move on to the Code A. We have the Code A semifinals. I will get that image up. And um, mm-hmm. we have Bomber beating out Ryung 3-1. And MVP beating Keen, 3-1 as well. So uh, clear, decisive victories in those matches on the Code A semifinals. Um, yeah. Anything you want to talk about those? 
um, just saying that Bomber is revealing himself and becoming one of the Terran beasts in Korea. Um, the guy was so, so good, so efficient. And um, we're going to follow this up with um, the finals. Mm -hmm. And Bomber just did brilliantly. I mean, he defeated 3-1 Ryang here on the semifinals. And mm -hmm. uh, on, the other, on the other matchup, you had I am MVP, who is a tremendous Terran player. I always keep wondering what is he doing here on um, Code A. But I mean that um, things are just getting this tight. He needs to be aware he cannot slip or else he's, he's going to end up on Code A. Yeah. That's what happened to MVP. It already happened to other players. Mm -hmm. And um, you had both Bomber and MVP winning 3-1. Bomber against Ryang, MVP against Keen. And they ended up matching and battling against each other on a massive TVT on the finals. Yeah. Let's go for the finals here as I get the results up. Um, yeah. As you guys saw from the previous result, it was Startail Bomber versus I Am, Nest, I Am MVP. And, uh, man, great series. Surprise, surprise, Bomber manhandled MVP, man. I mean, 4-2, this was a pretty clear cut in my opinion. And uh, Bomber, as you said, revealing his strength with a great win. Um, yeah. I mean, anything else you want to add to this? A, I mean, it was just powerful play yeah. by Bomber. Yeah, Bomber played very well. He's, he's already, he already revealed himself in the past. Obviously, he already shown signs that he is a quality, a quality Terran. But um, he's been evolving. And I mean, for you to take a win 4-2 over MVP, you need to be good. At least mm -hmm. on that moment, you need to be on top shape. And uh, Bomber was just able to provide a huge battle there and uh, basically kind of dethroned MVP because um, with me included, there was a lot of people already thinking that MVP got this and is going to win this finals and Bomber just took it away from his hands. Yeah. Respect for MVP, obviously, but congrats to Bomber. Awesome results and he's the Code A champion. So uh, with a bit of luck, we're going to see more of him on Code S soon enough. Yeah, definitely. Um... That wraps it up for the Code S and the Code A. Um, real quick, yeah. do you want to go through the uh, up and down matches since I have not watched any of those, but we had the results for Day 1 and Day 2. Uh, we'll go through those yeah, results just, uh, and then we can talk a little bit about the uh, Super Tournament that's coming up here. Yeah, also um, I think you have a picture of all the groups from the GSL up and down because for now only half of the groups played and yeah. uh, maybe you could show that at the end. But sure. um, uh, let me you're going to go for first. the first I'll just one? Put up, I'll, put up, no, I'll put up the groups. I have all the groups up okay, right now. Okay. So uh, why Go don't you read it. through all uh, the groups for us? Yeah, well, basically, um, group A, B, C, and D already played when we were uh, doing the show. Um, you guys already know the results. It was um, kind of interesting, actually, because um, you ended up having Hoseo San going down to Code A. Bit disappointing. Uh, that group wasn't uh, the easiest one, but it was a fairly balanced one with Sagisu Trick Trickster, Osio Sun and MVP Keen. And then on Group B, you had Jinro, Zinio, Koka. Group C, Xenex, Bian, Czech Prime, and Alive. And then on Group D, OGS MC, Hungan Prime, and Ryung. And uh, like I was saying, and um, on Group A, you ended up having um, Keen advancing to Code S. Really good uh, result. Keen is just playing solid. He did very well there. Mm -hmm. Trickster was able to remain on Code S, but he was struggling there. It wasn't clear cut. And then you have one of the biggest surprises, Hoseo Sun, basically fading away to Code A. He was doing so well on the previous season, and now basically he's going to be stuck in Code A, battling his way up. Um, not going to be easy. We've been seeing a lot of stars just crashing and burning into Code A, and some of them even disappearing. Mm -hmm. um, then on Group B, you, you had Coca, Jinro, and OGS Zinio, and um, it was really complicated. I mean, yeah. I watched all the matches and uh, watch Jinro, and Jinro was really frustrated inside that booth. Uh, things weren't going his way. Um, he tried uh, a lot of bunker rushes and uh, a lot of harass, but things didn't pay off. He had the group with two Zergs, and both those Zergs were able to own him. Uh, Koka ended up advancing to Kodas. Jinro is now down on Code A, and uh, Zinio was able to remain on Kodas. So, um, that's what I'm talking before, you know. Um, yeah. Apparently, the foreign force is slowly dwindling away. Yeah, I mean, General just looked like he was struggling, man. And, uh, yeah. I mean, he yeah. was doing great. He got those two uh, high up. He got into the round of four, I believe, twice. And then it just seems like things started slowly dematerializing for him. And right now, he just seems like he's searching for himself. And he needs to get, to, needs to get back to his solid play style. Either that or, I mean, his gameplay just hasn't evolved with 
the entire community over there in Korea, which, I mean, we're seeing all sorts of great players show up. Code S is packed to the hilt with amazing, uh, amazing talent. Yeah. And Code A, I mean, there's not much elbow room to work with in there either, as we can, we can see. So um, mm -hmm. better, better for the foreigners to start ste stepping up their game, and uh, or they might find themselves going to the Code B or being deported, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what they're thinking about, but um, there was already a lot of people on Team Liquid commenting that maybe it's time for Team Liquid to pull out of Korea. Yeah. It's not something that you can just take that decision lightly, you know? Mm -hmm. It's also a sign, uh, might be interpreted as a sign of weakness, like yeah. we do not belong here, we cannot handle the pressure, and it might not be what Team Liquid wants at the moment. Yeah. Um, also, I'm pretty sure that Chinro and Huck they want to stay there. They want mm -hmm. to battle again into Code S and do the best they can. I mean, they're the both guys that are even learning Korean and trying to get used to all the environment and to the, the culture and the society. So I'm pretty sure they're committed to stay there. But I mean, it depends a lot on the results. If one day both of them just got stuck on Code B, maybe they just decide to head back home. Especially because, as we all know, the scene, the StarCraft II scene outside of Korea is getting really big mm -hmm. and the, the, the phenomenon is not actually happening as it was on Brood War, like it was really focused on Korea and there was not much going on outside. Actually, this time seems to be the other way around. There's a lot of tournaments to win outside and these players might come to Europe and North America and rack up a lot of money. Um, we'll see what happens, but for now we have Jinro on Kodai and I'm pretty sure he's not very happy about that. Yeah. I agree. Um, I do remember some people. I believe I was watching uh, one of the Justin TV streams, uh, the one with Idra and DJ Wheat. They were commenting on what was that the uh, yeah. the Masters Cup? I think was it was it? the Evil Genius. Yeah, Evil it's Genius Evil Genius Genius tournament. And I saw plenty of people in the chat saying, I mean, they seemed like they were trolling uh, Team Liquid team, and they were just saying how, oh man, Team Liquid boys are all dissolving and uh, people are falling apart and stuff. So I mean, yeah. A little bit There's of a lack lot of, of faith. There as well. Yeah, people are starting to show a lack of faith. Maybe um, I don't know. Just something to think yeah, about. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that on uh, on streams like that, there's yeah, always yeah. a lot of, of trolls. Yeah, of course, of course. Oh, but yeah, I mean, I, I understand the feeling like, oh my god, Team Liquid is just crumbling in Korea and they should get out of there and just focus their top players on the European tournaments and the North American tournaments and just try to get as many wins as possible. Okay, that's viable, but um, I'm pretty sure they want to have a, a, a position and some visibility on the GSL. Mm -hmm. That's important as well. I agree completely. But um, yeah, that's it for the... Uh Code A, up and down, day one. Let's go for the day two results. Yep. Day two, we have uh, TSL Alive advances to Code S. Xenex Bion stays in Code S. And uh, Czech Prime, now in Code A. That's for Group C. Group D, we have Slayers Ryung, uh, stays in Code A. OGSMC stays in Code S. And, uh, what is that, Maka Prime? Sorry, my eyes just... Maka Prime stays in Code S. Let me take a look. Let, let me take a look. I'm just checking here oh, it's hung and with the I'm results. Sorry. Hung and Prime stays in Code S. I don't know why I was, I was yeah. looking at a smaller image. But Hung and Prime stays well, in Code um, S, so that's for Group D. I'm, um, I'm a bit sad, obviously, with um, Czech Prime. I, I always loved the guy. But um, basically, you have here um, a TSL Alive, who was alive for you before. Mm hmm finally grabbing a spot on Code S. He was struggling on Code A, trying to get out of it, so congrats to Alive. Xenex Bian was able to stay in Code S, and now we have Czech Prime on Code A. Uh, I'm not sure where Co Czech Prime is heading, but feels a bit like Maka Prime, you know what I mean? And um, it's a bit disappointing for me because he was one of the early idols from StarCraft II, if I can call it that. And um, then you have Slayers Ryung, who is... Even the, his teammates on Team Slayer say he's one of the finest there. But uh, he wasn't able to uh, grab a spot on Code S. He stayed in Code A. He was on a really difficult group, as you might imagine. I mean, Ryung, OGSMC, and Hongan Prime mm -hmm. isn't easy. Yeah. And we have uh, OGSMC staying on Code S. Good news, in my opinion. Definitely. Wouldn't like to see him stuck on Code A for a, a, a season. Yeah. And Hongan Prime just... Hug and Prime just holding there and staying on Code S as well. So I guess that Ryung will have to work a bit more. And um, 
I don't know, maybe we're going to have to wait and hear more about the Slayers team. I really like Slayers MMA. Maybe he's going to be the next uh, uh, superstar there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's what happened here. Okay, now do me a favor. Go back to that group so we can check yeah, the groups that are still to say. come. Let's go over the, uh, the up and down groups because we have group E, F, G, and H still to talk about. And uh, yeah, I'm sure uh, we have a few opinions to go over that. So uh, why don't mm -hmm. you lead the way real quick. Okay, let me take a look here. Uh, we have on the groups, starting with group E, we have, um, who's the guys? Well, this group is going to be really hard, and yeah. Huck is involved in it. Well, I Huck, mean, Marine King, King Prime, Prime Huck, and, and, and Yeah, it's a really solid group. Two tremendous Terrans, and Huck is going to struggle a lot yeah. to actually be able to do something about it on this group. I mean, I'm not saying he's just completely... Uh, uh, destined to be on Kodai and stuck there, but uh, he's going to have a big, a big hill to climb facing Marine King and MMA. Like I was just commenting, I think MMA is Kodai's material. Marine King is just solid. I mean, the guy already did so many finals. He tends to break on the finals, as we all know, and uh, doesn't get all the way up to on the top of the mountain, but still it's a sign that he has what he takes. So uh -huh. this is going to be complicated for Huck. Definitely. I would say at first, si at first sight that Marine King and MMA will be the ones... Um, going for CODES on this group. Mm -hmm. um, crazier things <laughs> what you have happened, but you never know. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, what do you I... think? you think Huck stands a chance? or? A... I, oh, it's, it's hard to tell, man. Marine King Prime, uh, the guy is a solid player. He's been to plenty of finals, so he knows, he knows all sorts of kinds of pressure, pressure situations. Um, so for me, I think that he is going to be a clear-cut victor in this group. Uh, that leaves us with Huck and MMA. Um, to be honest, MMA has shown more stability than Huck has. Uh, we've seen more, uh, can you say, big matches, big big time matches between MMA and his opponents, where he has come out on top um, in the team league or in the code. A, and I think he's just maybe more fit for this match uh, than yeah. Huck is. But you never know. Huck mm -hmm. can still pull something out of his hat and. Honestly, I'm rooting for him, so I really hope he does because I would like to see him uh, stay in Code S and have another shot at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be nice. Group F, uh, then, we um, have Kyrix, yeah. The Wind, and Violet. And um, I think that uh, The Wind should be able to make it out of this group no problem, but uh, you never know. I mean, the guys play, he's, uh, as we've stated before, he's the uh, OGS coach. And I'm um, not sure how much time he gets to devote to practicing, whereas he, he's probably coaching a lot more. But what are your thoughts on this group, Hydra? Well, um, I've been following Violet, and uh, the guy played really well. Uh, seemed quite solid. And this group is, group is going to be a bit um, random because basically it's three Zergs. So you know that um, sometimes the matchup you can just, uh, out of... Uh, a little detail, you know, a little delay, or your uh, your opponent being able to cut a the corner there and just gain a couple of seconds might give might might be beneficial, and uh, this is going to be risky. I mean, the wind is good; he's already been in Codes in the past and doing fine, but um, he's basically a coach from Team OGS that actually practices a lot as well. I'm not sure if he's in the same level as Violet and Kirix. Um, um, we're going to see. I do know that Kirix Zenith was. Uh, um, kind of a big Zerg way back. I always recall these matches against Marine King Prime, and that was at least, like, what, three seasons ago? Something like that. Yeah, I mean, it was And like then that. we have Violet. That for, yeah, for me, Violet, I don't know, he was good. Was playing nice on the on Code A this season, and uh, felt like a comfortable Zerg, so he might put up a surprise. I'm not going to compromise with any results here. Besides, I would like to see um, OGS the wind on Code S, yes. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to be clear cut. It's going to no. be really, really close, really risky. I agree with you. Do uh, you want to take over for Group G? Um, yeah, let me look at Group G. Well, Group G, all Terrans, plenty of TVTs. Mm -hmm. We have Rain. Rainbow and MVP. I'm all for MVP. <laughs> okay? Uh, <laughs> uh, that's <yeah>. kind of obvious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, I mean, you already had Rain and Rainbow as uh, big references playing Terran in Korea. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the early stages of the GSL, they were really respected. But they kind of been uh, dwindling down and fading away. Especially with the... Um, 
the appearance of a lot of nice, good new players that uh, were actually at their level and in some situations that are, that are even above their level. So on this group, I'm uh, hoping for MVP to do well so we can have him on Code S once more. And maybe I would bet on Rainbow just because I'm a fan of him from back on the days of Brood War mm -hmm. and I would like to see him back on the, um, on the center stage Code S once more. Would be nice. Yeah, uh, I would agree with your result picks as well. Um, if MVP somehow gets upset uh, and he finds his way back into Code A again, uh, man, who knows what's going to happen because this guy clearly needs to be in the Code S. And, uh, I mean, he just needs to get it together and get to Code S so we can finally see him, uh, see him battle the big names in Code S again. But, yeah, pretty sure that it's going to be MVP and Rainbow, as you said. And uh, lastly, Group H, we have Lin and Snare and Bomber. And uh, this is going to be a tough group as well, but in my opinion, Bomber and Snare should be able to make it out. Um, yeah. Lin has You've been... been a... Fox Lin has been doing well, and then he doesn't do so well. So, I mean, this guy, he's got plenty of... Op he's had plenty of opportunities, but for me right now, I don't think his game is completely collected right now. And uh, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure we're going to see Bomber and Snare make it out of this. And it's uh, another all Terran group. So... Is it an all... Well, is... um... I'm taking just um, a look here. Um, like you were saying, Lin is really unstable. Um, and then you have Bomber here. Mm -hmm. ST Bomber been doing quite well. Quite a good player. And OGS in Snare, I don't know. It's another group loaded with Terrans. You know, yeah. it, it makes things easy to practice. So people just only have TVTs to take care of. But um, at the same time, you need to go into all the details on TVT because you're only going to face Terrans and they're pretty sure that your opponents are going to be doing the same thing. They're going to try to cut corners and pick up every little detail on every map. So um, they need to uh, focus a lot on that uh, matchup. Right. Uh, I don't know. I would like to see Bomber passing. I Yeah, I would too because uh, he's shown some phenomenal gameplay in the... Uh in the code A so far, and um, yeah, yeah. I, I think he deserves to go to code S, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll see him advance to the code S, but uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. And uh, real quick, I just wanted to mention, one of our viewers in the chat, Solon TLG, has uh, mentioned that MC said in an interview that Hey Pro will be leaving Korea, so uh, that's one yeah. more foreigner that's departing from the Korean scene, so uh, thank you, Solon, for that piece of information. Yeah, it's basically they're slowly dwindling down, you know. Um, feels like we need uh, another batch. Maybe uh, motivated players feels like players just feel wearing down and they're just not at the top of their game. And well, on Hey Pro uh, case, I mean, he had some uh, appearances on the GSL, but he never did very well there. He struggled a lot. So um, maybe him heading back home. And being in Sweden, as you know, there's that new uh, pro gaming house in Sweden. Maybe he's going to go and stay there. He might be doing well on the European scene. Who knows? Would be cool. Yeah. Um, I really hope he does show up at the, uh, the foreigner house or the, in the European house that uh, Sebastian is saying has been putting a lot yeah, of information yeah. in on. But um, hopefully we'll see something good come out of over there. And uh, hopefully those players will be able to uh, recollect their thoughts and focus again on the game and their, uh, their progression. But uh, that's enough with that. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the uh, GSL Super Tournament that's coming up here. Um, the big thing about this is the uh, prize payout. There's going to be lots of money here. And, uh, I mean, this is another aspect of the GSL. We've had already the GSL uh, Team Leagues. We've had World Championship. We have the, uh, the regular GSL Code S and Code A. And um, now we're seeing the GSL Super Tournament. Um, so GOM TV is just doing, uh, putting lots of eggs in the basket for the GSL. And I think it's being a very fruitful venture. And it's something that's uh, plenty exciting for everybody to pay attention to and watch. And um, with this kind of money and uh, this big event that's going to be happening, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of big names and a lot of big action like we've seen from uh, previous GSL special events. Uh, what are your thoughts on the match or the uh, tournament that will be taking place, Hydra? Well, I think it's huge. It's going to be awesome to watch it, obviously. Um, has a big payout there with the prices. As you can see, the... Um, 
the the rewards for actually getting for like what round of 16 and so yeah. you start racking up some money and there's a lot of money involved so this is going to be attracting a lot of players obviously and we're going to see the best of the best facing here hopefully um looks pretty cool i'm ready to watch it i'm just stoked uh i just want to see if it's going to be as uh, very similar to what you already had on the GSL, or if they're gonna change something, you know, they're they're uh, they're showing it and calling it the super tournament. So they will have to make something hap epic happening. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I don't know about the venue, the place to do the tournament. I'm not sure exactly what they're planning, but um, being called a super tournament, I would be hoping for something really big with a lot of people watching it. So it will probably require a lot of advertising, advertising and publicity in Korea to attract people there. So you can make something like with the magnitude or something that you can actually call super tournament. Yeah. Still, it's going to be awesome. I'm ready to watch it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we've been really rewarded with uh, previous uh, big time events that the GSL has put on. So something with the name Super Tournament and uh, with this sort of prize payouts, I mean, I'm expecting some huge matchups and uh, some like big time entertainment. So look out for that, guys. Make sure you uh, pay attention and uh, keep checking things out. And the final event will be held on June 18th and it will be a best of seven matchup uh, according to the news that will po was posted. Um, the 64 man tournament will be starting on May 23rd. So Keep your calendars marked and uh, watch for those events coming up in the near future. Yeah. Um, let's shift okay, gears so a bit. Okay, so what's next? Let's uh, shift gears a bit and move to the uh, North American scene. And uh, let's discuss the news with the IGN Pro League and uh, the NASL results for NASL Week 4. Let me just get the mm -hmm. news up here. Um, as you guys yep. may have no noticed before... Um, IPL season one just took place, and uh, this was a s just phenomenal event that was put on by uh, IGN. Um, post production and uh, quality was just through the roof, in my opinion, and uh, there was no mm. lack of interesting games either. So it was nice to see that both the players and the quality uh, of the presentation were both top notch, and um, it was only the beta test. So as you can imagine, I'm sure they've ironed out any uh, wrinkles in the uh, production. And uh, Season 2 is sure to be even better than the first season. And uh, with a $50,000 uh, prize pool, you can uh, bet, your, bet your bottom dollar that this is going to be quite an epic event. And um, so far we you have... Can say, you, can, you can say bet your ass, it's okay, but <laughs> keep going, it's fine. <laughs> uh, the four invited players on, so far are E.G. Idra, Root Kiwikaki, uh, Select, and E.G. Axlav. So uh, I believe all four of these players made it quite deep into the tournament as we had uh, Idra um, facing Kiwikaki in the finals of Season 1 and Idra, Idra taking the victory. And uh, I believe Select had third place. And I mean, so we're already starting off with some uh, great players who showed... A phenomenal play last season and things are only going to get better in my opinion this season what do you think hydra yeah well um ipl is just flowing excellent quality of uh, production on the season one and they just announced season two with 15 uh, fifty thousand dollars on them at stake i'm pretty sure it's going to attract some of the bigger names playing uh, starcraft 2 at the moment i'm hoping for this time to have a broader, a broader spectrum. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We focused a lot on the North American side. It has some really cool matches with some good players, but um, I want to see it growing, you know? Yeah. Grab some European players. Maybe you, you can get some European players there. I know that there's conditions to be, um, to be followed, like all games are going to be played on the North American servers. You need to have a North American server account and so on. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, but I mean, it's uh, acceptable to, um, to play as being North American, Latin America, or European. Right. Would be nice to see some of the top Europeans showing up on the IGN uh, league, you know? Would be I, cool. I agree still, completely. Yeah, still. Um, First season was awesome, and they stated several times it was a trial run, so it was just one of the finest trial runs i ever seen, and I can only expect good things coming out of this season too, so let's go for it. I'm stoked. Yeah. 
I'm definitely pumped and I'll be looking forward to it. And as you said, uh, I hope that they reach out uh, and get more players from uh, not just the North American region, but uh, Europe and Latin America as well, because uh, there's some excellent players there as well. And um, in my opinion, I just want to see this grow. And I, I think it's going to grow because they proved in the beta trial yeah. run that uh, they, have the, they have the capability and the prowess how to do this and mm -hmm. run it properly. And, uh, I mean, it, things are looking good already. So, yeah, guys, definitely stay tuned and look forward to the season, season two of the IPL because uh, it's sure to be a blast. But yeah. um, let's move on to NASL and cover the results there. And uh, why don't you read through the first two results for the week of four, the, uh, the first two uh, bracket list, and, uh, and I'll read through mm -hmm. the last two, and I'll get the VOD rolling here. Yeah, go for it. Um, so basically on NASL, you had a lot of cool matchups this week. I watched some of them, not all, unfortunately, but um, I do like the league. Uh, I do know there's some issues. Uh, people debate that a lot with the latency and playing from Korea to North American servers and so on. But uh, it's something that professional players try to deal with. Not easy every time, but uh, we've we actually been having some good results from Korean players as well. Even if they're uh, struggling with um, a bit of lag and latency on their end, they're trying to put out the best effort and uh, actually getting some nice results. But um, starting here, we had... Moro winning 2-1 over Moon on a ZVZ. Then you had uh, Sheth dominating TLO 2-0. It uh, was kind of a surprise. People were rooting for TLO a lot. But uh, Sheth just showing that uh, he is on top shape. He's doing very well. Mm -hmm. And he's now getting very well recognized on the North American scene. He has his stream. He's getting a lot of visibility. And actually, I think it's well-deserved. The guy is good. Mm -hmm. um, also, then we had, uh, uh, I think, something it was, uh, that was a surprise. We had six checks vibe dominating over Grubby 2-0. People were rooting for Grubby and, well, he wasn't able to uh, withstand the pressure from Vibe. So uh, Vibe, the Zerg player, dominating the Protoss Grubby. And then we had um, Rainbow winning over Kiwikaki 2-1. Close call there. Um, unfortunately, Kiwikaki wasn't able to uh, withstand the pressure and Rainbow did quite well. One of the examples of... Um, Korean pro gamers playing from Korea and being able to um, withstand or handle the latency, getting used to it and try to fight back and play with the tools that they have and Rainbow in this situation winning. And then you have, well, I don't know what to say anymore, Phoenix 2-0 of Artosis. Um, <laughs> Artosis is how, out of his depth, in my opinion, is a brilliant caster, but uh, if he wants to play at this level, he needs to commit a lot more time because um, he feels like he's on prehistory and everyone else is on modern age. He still haven't, uh, haven't got a single win on the NASL. All defeats, um, just a bunch of them, and now losing to Phoenix, who is quite a good Terran player, but as you know, he hasn't been having the best results ever. So when he loses to someone that is also on the slope, it's always a bad sign. Yeah. Uh, moving on for the other, for the other um, day that was played, you have the TT1 defeating Moman, the French Zerg player. TT1 defeated him 2-1. Uh, Dark Force, the German Zerg, defeating in control 2-0. Clear cut there. In control tried his best, but wasn't enough. And then you have my favorite, July Zerg, defeating 2-0 over Cruncher. As you know, Cruncher at the moment has a lot of uh, fans and a lot of haters because of the Idra relationship, <laughs> if I can <laughs> call it that. But yeah, uh, July took a, a clear victory over him, 2-0. And we have White Rod defeating QXE. 2-1 uh, was a close call there, but as you guys know, QXE is trying to focus back into his game now because he's been studying and finishing off his um, university-related stuff and probably is going to start shipping up now. White Ra, I think he didn't even imply these special tactics, but yeah, he took the victory 2-1 there and uh, finished off QXE once more. Okay, now back to you. All right. Um, moving on, we have TT1 uh, beating out Mo Man. 2-1 to one in a uh, uh, Protoss versus Zerg matchup. Uh, TT1, great player, and uh, good victory there. Mo Man uh, took game one, and uh, TT1 just put it into overdrive and took the next two games. Then moving on, we have Dark Force beating In Control, the head man of NASL himself being uh, rolled here 2-0 by Dark Force. We also see July beating Cruncher 2-0, uh, and uh, White Rod beating QXC 2-1. to one. And uh, did you just go over those, Hydra? I think I'm on the wrong bracket. 
Let me look. Um, yeah, what, I think which he one chose are you one following? of those, Tell actually. Ah, uh, yeah. Which one are you going over? Tell I, me. I accidentally just went over the uh, the white raw bracket again. Uh, I was yeah, it's fine. Don't worry. Just keep following. It's My fine. Bad. I was paying attention to uh, the users yeah. in chat. But uh, moving on to the next series of brackets, we have Straylock beating Axlav 2-1. We have Moonglade beating DDE 2-0. Uh, Moonglade finally showing his strength here. Um, great player with a great result there, 2-0. We have Startail Squirtle beating Kawaii Rice, 2-0. Um, Naniwa beating Slush, 2-0. Naniwa has just been playing uh, phenomenal for quite yeah. some time now. It seems anywhere I look, I see Naniwa is uh, always winning, doesn't seem to be losing. We have Hey Pro versus Nada. Uh, this matchup has actually been rescheduled, so we'll have to look forward to the future um, to see this matchup. Then we have yep. Rhett facing Star Life and Rhett winning over Star Life 2 to 1. Then we see Select versus Goody. Select wins 2 1 over Goody. Then um, everybody's crowd favorite when Hydra mentions it Hasu Hobbs versus Cats. <laughs> and uh, Hasu Hobbs <laughs> wins 2 1. Uh, Braddock <laughs> versus Ace, 2-1, and MC Destroying Machine, 2-0. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, the two guys on top shape here is Naniwa and Asu Hobbs. I yeah. mean, they're just, they're just completely on a peak of form. Asu Hobbs, as you know, has been uh, revealing himself on the TSL. And then you have uh, Naniwa just dominating everything he touches, turns into gold. Every tournament he plays is just completely dominating since the last MLG and apparently keeps rolling because he just defeated Slush clear cut there 2-0 and well respect for Asu Hobbs as well defeating Cats there um, and also the most obvious um, result here was MC against Machine actually people were uh, hoping a bit more from Machine but uh, MC didn't uh, give him any chances and was yeah. clear cut 2-0 and over with Machine mm -hmm. so uh, pretty good results there from NASL um, some interesting yep. matchups. It seems that uh, there's no real stable, uh, clear-cut victor in NASL. It seems that at any any moment in time, anyone can just eke out the victory. And uh, I mean, there's no clear clear-cut dominator um, in the tournament so far, as compared to uh, Korea, yep. where we see some big names who are the uh, clear-cut leaders over there. So I mean, interesting to see this sort of uh, mix-ups and uh, matchups taking place. So definitely, uh, yeah. New... But uh, I mean, uh, I mean, it makes it makes sense. It's a very long league. Mm -hmm. It's going to take several weeks. They're just playing games in the league, trying to rack up points. And uh, sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, and uh, you only see like a couple of players actually taking all the wins on every turn, every game that they they play. But there's a lot of balance. You know, the mm -hmm. players are. Close calls there, they're balanced, so you take a win this week, and next week you're going to get some defeats. And it is interesting, I mean, it's a way of keeping everything interesting and appealing to all the viewers, and I'm glad that NASL is doing well as well. Yeah, definitely. Then that's, that's what I was saying. Uh, it's nice to see uh, yeah, a fresh yeah. mix-up going on. But let's move on to TSL 3, as we had uh, an excellent matchup this past weekend. And if you guys missed it, Naniwa is headlining the news again in his matchup versus, uh, I'll let you say it, Hydra this time since I'm not as good with you. Not as good as uh, your <laughs> accent, but why don't you say who was playing? Where, where? I'm sorry. Could For you repeat the, uh, that? TSL3, where are... Naniwa versus uh, Hasuobs. Hasuobs. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any votes from it? Yep, I'm going to get that rolling real quick. But, uh, okay, man, okay. Naniwa again headlining the news just... Clear victor here. He was a powerful player against uh, Hasuobs, and um, man, every every time I turn around, I see Naniwa's name in the headlines somewhere. But why don't you talk a little bit more about that, and I'll get the vod rolling, Hydra. I mean, I don't have much to say. Those two players are just in top, top shape. They've been showing their skills on the TSL. As well as you can see here on the NASL, they are doing quite well, which is a sign that it isn't a fluke. It's not like, oh, yeah, that night went very well and I took the wins on the TSL and then I just did utter crap and just disgraced myself on the NASL. No, they're just being consistent, uh, taking advantage of all the things that they can profit from their race playing Protoss at the moment, and um, just showing everyone how far you can take um, 
your uh, your play style and your skill playing the race. Uh, respect for both of them, Naniwa and Hasu Hobbs. They've been doing brilliantly, at least well for the Hasu Hobbs, like the last couple of months, and Naniwa a bit longer. Um, on Naniwa, I already commented this several times. Since he went into Dignitas, things seem to be settling down for him, and he just dropped out all the BM and the verbal abuse and all that stuff, and he's actually focus on, focusing on his game, and it shows. It mm -hmm. shows on his play style, it shows on his results. Hasu Hobbs, I mean, I know the guy for quite a while, but before he got qualified for the, DS, the TSL, I wasn't actually following him, and I'm pretty sure most people wasn't following him as well. The fact is that he's doing tremendously well, and uh, probably was one of those players that uh, deserved a bit more visibility, and now he's getting it. So congrats to both of them, and you're going to have a massive Swedish clash, which I'm assuming that Sebastian would like to talk about. Yeah. But, um, well, it's not here today. I guess he's going to have to wait... Can... He's going to have to wait for next week. Yeah. He's just, he brings a huge Swedish flag next week and we just put a webcam on him and he can just go with his flag all day <laughs> Start long. dancing it around, uh, start singing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it was awesome to watch. was some impeccable uh, matchups there, the semifinals from the TSL. And we're now getting ready for some uh, huge battles on that final, at least I'm hoping for. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be pretty big finals. And uh, mm -hmm. Naniwa, I mean... He's deserved to get here. He has played really well, and he's played consistently, which is uh, the key. And um, I'm really looking forward to see uh, what happens in the finals because uh, I'm pretty sure Naniwa has the ability to take the win here in the finals. And uh, I'm, in my opinion, he's the favored, the favored player to win the finals. Uh, what about you, Hydra? I really don't know. Um... I really, really, really don't know. <laughs> um, I, I, I would like to see Naniwa winning. I don't know. I, I, I'm, he, he was a bad boy, okay? The guy was, uh, was, uh, um, had a lot of BM, had a lot of issues in the past, and seems like he's growing out of it. Um, he's um, focusing and showing that even if you're uh, by any chance having any issues in your life or professionally as a pro gamer on this specific situation, you can overcome that. And um, as long as you commit yourself, you dedicate yourself to what you're doing and just set everything else on the side, you can achieve some really good goals. And that's the example that Naniwa is actually providing for all of us. Mm. And uh, based on that, I'm, I mean, I'm rooting for the guy. But um, I, I'm, I'm not uh, that biased, meaning that uh, I'll be happy if Naniwa doesn't win. You know, I just want some epic finals. I want to enjoy myself watching that. Hopefully, you're going to have... Thousands of people uh, enjoying that uh, those matchups on TSL as well, and just to um, make TSL stand out as one of the big references on the online tournaments, so the next one can even be bigger. You know, yeah, um, would be cool. Still, I... I'm more than happy with the results, and uh, probably going to be rooting for Naniwa. Yeah, definitely. And uh, that was a nice summary and a nice wrap up. And um, let's just look ahead real quick. I'm going to put the uh, the matchups that are going to be taking place. I'll put those up on the screen here for the TSL 3 finals. Sunday or Saturday, May 14th, we will see the best of 7 series for the third place between Empire Kaz and Miles Hasuabs. So, you guys will not want to miss out on that. We we're going to have we'll be having DJ Wheat and uh, Husky casting that series. So, tune in for that. And then the TSL 3 grand finals will take place Sunday, May 15th. And it will be casted by Chill and Day9, and that will be featuring Naniwa and Miles Thorzane. So, guys, tune in because uh, Naniwa versus Thorzane, this is going to be huge. Yeah. And uh, all Swedish battle here. So, I mean, Sebastian is going nuts. I can uh, imagine him at work right now, and he's probably going to listen to the VOD later, and he's going to spam me with text. But, uh, I mean, Naniwa versus Thorzane, who would have thought that these two players would have made it to the final? And uh, it's going to be epic. So, guys, do not, um, do not miss out on that. You're definitely going to want to tune in for that. Um, any thoughts yeah, on any um, of those games that are going to be coming up, Hydra? I don't know. I, I, I didn't even mention much of Thorzain, but um, he is so good. Yeah. He's been revealing himself as such a solid player. And um, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm hoping just for an awesome finals. I'm not going to uh, allow myself to stretch into a lot of future predictions because I know that I'm going to be torched for it. I'm just going to sit down and enjoy it as a, view, as a viewer like everyone will do. And that's basically it. Um, what else can I say? Um, he deserves a win in the TSL. I mean, if he gets to the finals and take the final victory there, it's well deserved. He's been showing tremendous play. You, you guys seen on the previous matches when he played, if I'm not mistaken, against uh, MC. He did brilliant there. He had some awesome moves. It was mm -hmm. beautiful to watch those two guys clashing. So uh, even if he takes it from Nanua in the end, yeah, I'll be happy the same. Yeah, it's going to be a great matchup, and uh, I'm just I'm looking forward to it, man. Thursday, Naniwa, tune in, May 15th, don't miss out, TSL 3 Grand Finals, be there or have your house burned down and that'll be your only excuse that I'll accept for not watching it, but uh, definitely check it out, guys. And uh, I believe that wraps it up for today's show. Um, I think we yep. did pretty good here, Hydra. Just you and mm -hmm. I. I was just like, um, I'm just like to add a, a short mention to uh, the Star Wars um, tournament that keeps going on. It's very easy for you guys to find it here on Justin TV. You just need to find IC Cup. They've they've been recording vods of every day. They've been casting the replays, and I mean you have matchups. I was watching um, the stream last night, and it was something like Genero versus OGSMC. And TLO versus Love CD, who is a Chinese player, is the brother of Sky, one of the most well-known Warcraft 3 players in China. You have some huge matches on Star Wars and people are ignoring the tournament. Um, one issue that I know that they've been having, because I read, I read the comments on the... Um, read the comments on the on the stream or on the replays because the players were commenting on it is that they've been having some big lag attacks occasionally inside the games and that always um, throw down the match you know it's just it's frustrating to try to play your best and having lag just assaulting you mm -hmm. still the the tournament is huge it's very simple to access it it's all free and with good quality on Justin TV type IC cup and then go to the VODs page in IC Cup. You have all the days there, like three-hour VODs with a lot of epic matches for you guys to enjoy. Do not miss that. Yeah. That's all. Thank you, Hydra. And uh, I have one announcement as well as Sebastian sent me a text message. Um, he recently got a new computer, and he's venturing into shoutcasting, and he wants everybody to know to uh, check out his S StarCraft II commentary that he's worked on. Uh, his website is polygonreview.com, and uh, check out his newest GG Vision with Nada versus Sase. And um, yeah, I mean, we're going to be hearing more from him. He's going to be joining us next week, but uh, yeah, he's got some good things in the store for us. So check that out, and um, make sure you keep spreading the word about, about GG Rated. Tell your friends, add us on Twitter, twitter.com slash GG Rated, and um, we're just going to keep doing what we do, guys. So hopefully you guys stay tuned yep. and spread the word. And that's it for me, Hydra. Uh, anything you want to add real quick before we bounce? It's fine. See you all later, guys. Have fun. And next Tuesday, same time, same place, we're going to be here to provide you guys with all the news from the latest week. Yep. See ya. See you guys. GG.